Good morning. It's Friday, May 6th, and the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates by 5%. That's a half a percentage point the way they calculate it, but it's 5% in the real world. And so this is the first time in 22 years that they have raised the hype that high, that they've raised the rates that much. Now, what's going to happen to us poor Americans is that we are going to find ourselves trapped with higher borrowing costs. Of course, there may be a side benefit, but that isn't going to kick in for a couple more months, at least a couple more months. Because I remember back in 1983, when I opened my first IRA, I opened it in a bank account, and I was getting 12% interest on that bank account, guaranteed for five years. Now, I hope that happens this time around, because we could use that benefit. But right now, we are not going to see higher interest rates that are being paid out to us on our deposits for at least three or four months. Now, this is what's really going to happen if you take a look at the big picture. This rate hike means that the interest costs for mortgages, home equity loans, credit cards, student loans, and car loans, everything is going up. They will all be going up. So I do not understand fully how this interest rate really helps curb inflation, right? Business loans will get pricier, and large businesses and small businesses, what do they do? When their costs go up, who pays? You and I pay. The poor consumer who is caught in the middle of this. And most of us who work hard for a living, do not benefit from these price increases. You can look around and you can see many companies having their employees fight for unions. And the reason they want to fight for unions is pay as much as benefits. And the way this world is going right now, at least in the United States, the way it's going, salaries cannot keep up with the rate of inflation. You get a $20 raise, and they raise the cost of everything 50%. And that's, that's a crime. But, and that's what the Fed is trying to control. The Fed, by raising interest rates, is somehow or other trying to control the price of goods in the marketplace. And I don't see how that can possibly really, really work. But then I'm not an economist. But I see it from a different perspective. I see when rates go up and corporations pay more for lending and borrowing money, then those costs are passed on to the consumers. And that's what we're looking at. Now, I don't know if this rate hike, this interest rate hike, is going to slow the inflation down because it doesn't seem to be working. I mean, we look at oil. Oil for $4.20 a gallon for gasoline. And then they release oil from the reserves to, to count it out and drive the price down. But it doesn't. The prices went up. They released all of these oil reserves and the prices went up. So our economy is in a great state of flux. And I feel sorry for all of those people who have to really work for a living and are really strapped. And of course, in my universe, I don't see many people like that. We are the lucky ones. We have lived through wars. We have lived through rises and falls in the economy. We've come out okay. But people now are going to be squeezed, squeezed by every percentage point that these banks and other interest-bearing organizations are going to squeeze us out of. But right now, we have a large percentage of people in this nation who are struggling with these high rising courses. Every place from the grocery store to the gas pump to the department stores and every place prices are getting higher. And the Fed's mandate is to keep 
prices stable, but so far inflation is winning the battle. But Jerome Powell, who's the head of the Fed, says inflation is much too high and we understand the hardship it's causing and we are moving expeditiously to bring it back down. But expeditiously is not fast enough. And anything they do right now will probably not really have any effect for several months, maybe even a whole year. But we've got a conflict in the Ukraine. We've got many other things that are going on that affect the costs of food and materials and products. We've got China locking down, and they are a major source of products. So we've got all kinds of situations that are working against reducing inflation quickly. So the rise in interest rates is just one more nail in the inflationary coffin because it's going to take a long time for this thing to settle down. It may take two or three years before it becomes reasonably normal again. Just take a look at the chart that I've included in this presentation at the end. You'll notice what was going on in 1982 and 1983 and how the interest rates progressed over the last 40 years. So when interest rates are high, some of us could benefit because when we put our money in the bank, we got a nice interest rate back. But that's not the case now. By the time the interest rates get ready to help the consumer, the poor guy who puts his money in the bank, right? It'll be too late for a lot of people. This is a real disaster, this situation with inflation. And jobs, you know, people are not staying on the job that long anymore. They're looking for other places. So we have a lot of things going on in the world outside of the United States that are affecting these prices and these these actions that the Fed is taking. And as usual, it's done at a snail's pace. So in any event, That's where we stand right now. Everything else is going to continue to go up based upon the interest rates that banks and companies will be fighting with and subjecting our population to those rates. And most of us don't even understand why, why we are affected this way. But it's shortages. And now a lot of this was caused by the pandemic, but we should be rounding that corner soon, I hope. But then again, if China keeps getting lockdowns, this could go on for a couple of more years. So suck it up and try to do the best you can and help your children if necessary. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.